A new study has been released uh, showing that a staggering rise in birth defects among Iraqi children conceived in the aftermath of the U.S.-led war. Uh, the findings were published by the Bulletin of Environmental Contamination and Toxicology. They claim America and Britain used ammunition responsible for high rates of miscarriage and huge numbers of birth defects, including in the heart and brain. Uh, let's now discuss this further with uh, Professor Christopher Busby from the European Committee on Radiation Risks. A, a great pleasure to see you today. Thank you for coming on the program. Let's address the issues here immediately. Uh, overall, the study finding cool. that the number of babies in Fallujah uh, born with birth defects increased by more than 60 percent in past seven years. Very, very big numbers indeed. However, no direct medical evidence has been given. Are you, are you buying it? Um, well, we have. It actually supports the work that we did and published about a month ago, which which did have formal uh, evidence uh, brought from the the hospital, from Fallujah General Hospital. So um, w we really do welcome the fact that there's another team now interested in this this problem. Uh, these these uh, increases in congenital malformations have been reported generally uh, from doctors in the area, and also we see now from Basra um, for a very long time. But but formal studies have been have been missing but we, we do we have found we have found about a 14-fold excess in heart defects and a 32-fold excess in nervous system defects so actually this supports all of the evidence that we have already presented and we're very pleased to see someone else is working on the problem but now we're also seeing in this report uh, discussing the issues of uh, toxic levels of lead and mercury be being found uh, as well where are these toxic levels coming from well, there are high levels of lead and mercury, which we also found in the hair of, pe of the mothers of the children with congenital malformations. But I have to say that, uh, that, that lead and mercury are not associated with increased risks of congenital malformation. So I think that it, as far as that is concerned, the, the authors of this new study are, are, are really in, uh, moving in the wrong direction. I, I think it's almost certain that the cause of these effects is radiation from uranium or depleted uranium, which I say that, which, which of course that they do mention, but there's no study that we know of and there's no mechanism, no biological mechanism which associates the exposure of lead and mercury to these kinds of congenital malformations. After all, there was a lot of lead in petrol, you know, um, before they banned it. And, and if it had been causing congenital malformations, you would have seen increases in these rates all along motorways. Well, it's, 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 and, it's, and very, it's very interesting how like it's very interesting how you bring in that last point. You're discussing the issues of radiation exposure, possibly behind the, the, these birth defects, as you say. Uh, we heard reports uh, years ago of, of during the invasion of Iraq of uh, missiles and bullets uh, tipped with depleted uranium being used in the warfare. Are you telling us here at RT that that's because that's the reason behind the majority of these yes, defects yes, and that's huge numbers. Absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> that's absolutely the cause. In fact, in our paper that we published last year, we measured the levels of uranium in the hair of these uh, mothers and we were able to look along the strand of hair. You know, as you know, hair grows slowly. And so if you look at the end of the hair, you get a sort of historical view of what's happening. And the, the uranium was increasing towards the end of the hair. So we believe quite strongly that it was the uranium weapons, the new uranium weapons that were used in Fallujah. And of course, they used an awful lot of depleted uranium in, in al-Basra as well. So, so that's also probably the cause of that. Well, you discuss you discuss this issue of, of radiation exposure, of missiles, bullets being tipped with depleted uranium being used by British and American forces in Iraq. The U.S. Defense Department has responded to this report by claiming there's no official evidence indicating a connection between military action and birth defects in Iraq. This seems like a bit of a, a backhanded response to such a severe, severe hit issue we're talking about here. Well, of course, of course, they would say that and they would, they would attempt to cover up anything that they've done. But I have to say that it's getting increasingly difficult the more and more papers that are being brought out on this issue. And I reported this whole uh, 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 issue about the uranium in the hair and the congenital malformations at the United Nations Human Rights Council last month. And there was an awful lot of interest in it there. So we would hope that the United Nations might actually put some pressure on the United States now to come clean about the kind of weaponry that they were using. And I'm sure they were using a lot of experimental weaponry in Fallujah, which is why we see these enormous increases in congenital malformation. Increases which have never been seen after any war in the past, I have to say, unless really serious agents like Agent Orange were, were being used. And there's no evidence that anything like that was being used in Iraq. All right, Professor Christopher Busby from the European Committee on Radiation Risks. Many thanks for coming on RT today. Thank you.